to another live stream here on my channel. I'm really excited. Uh, this is a Friday live stream. We have it every single Friday morning, my time. And uh, we always have a, a bunch of uh, content creator friends hanging out with us, talking shop, uh, talking industry news, what's coming up uh, and, uh, you know, what's happening lately. So if you have any questions, make sure you're asking them in the comments, make sure you're uh, or sorry, in the chat and uh, add to the conversation if you have any input, any insights. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring everybody in. Hey, everyone. <laughs> What's good morning. up? Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you guys Hello. are all at. Uh, quick intro, real quick. Name, where you're from. Um, we'll just go clockwise in my, from me. So Dr. Elo, Brant, then we'll go to Kelly and, and Lennon and go there. All right. So Dr. Elo, Efren Lopez, real name, right? So um, I help businesses get uh, more comfortable and people too uh, with live streaming at AskDrElo.com, and I'm here in Washington, D.C. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Brant. Brant Collins, co-host of The Stream Show with Strick and Brant, and I am coming live from Little Rock, Arkansas. Our main goal for our channel is to help streamers succeed. All right. Oh, I kind of changed order here. <laughs> we'll just go to Ash. <laughs> <laughs> See if it's my right channel. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Ash. I'm sorry. I've, I've got a weird signal there. Uh, my name is Ash. I'm a personal branding coach um, and a podcaster, host of the Personal Branding Secrets podcast. Um, and I'm from the UK and I'm moving on to YouTube now as well, which is fun. So, yeah, that's me. Sweet. Lenin. Uh, my name is Lennon. Uh, last name is Bone, so you can imagine that my adolescence was something to be desired. Um, I am. Uh, I, my my goal is to help artists and creatives to change the way they see their worth, and so I have a, a project called Stop the Starving Artist that you can find on Instagram awesome. and here on YouTube. Awesome, awesome. Good to have you here, Lennon. Awesome, man. And of course, Kelly. <laughs> what up party people <laughs> hey good morning everyone kelly noble mirabella with baby got bot and stellar media marketing i help agencies and small businesses learn how to use the awesome power of chat marketing so i'm pretty pumped to be here this morning so much is happening so much, so much, so much, so much. Uh, this is awesome. All right. All right. Well, this is cool. Well, we've got, you know, just like previous weeks, we've got uh, different things that we're going to be talking about when it comes to uh, industry news. And uh, this week, there's some really like exciting ones that have come out. And that's why we have Kelly here for sure. So we're going to kick this off with the many chat update. So uh, Kelly, give us a little bit of a rundown. What's happening this week? What happened? Yes. Was it yesterday? F8? Oh my gosh. Was it? I don't know. What day is it? It's Friday. No, it was two days ago. Two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So F8, which is, you know, the Super Bowl. Sorry, I'm coming in real hot right now because I talk fast and loud when I'm hyped oh, up. Um, so F8 was, you know, like the Super Bowl of developer conferences for Facebook. They always roll out something crazy. And we knew this was coming. There's been a lot of chatter about Instagram automation and, uh, they announced it. It was the focus of F8. They had quite a few to say about it. And I, uh, fortunately, fortunately, not unfortunately had, um, been able to get in about two weeks ago in the beta. So I've been kind of playing around with it. So this is a very exciting development. Um, anyone who's familiar with messenger bots knows that it can be very complicated and lots of rules. But the thing I love about the Instagram automation is it's far more simplified. You could still do a lot, but the rules are very simple and um and it's still very very powerful so i think people are going to be able to benefit quite a bit without having to worry about getting their whole pages shut down like on messenger nice nice so is it only many chat or is it is the api open to any no it's party? open to anyone and actually it's i'm glad you asked because it's not just affecting messenger or like sorry chat bot building companies which all the major chatbot building companies out there have this um now and many of them were already in the beta so they already had like their beta testers as well i just happened to be in the many chat one um, but also companies like agora pulse or you know any of these companies that have on their platform a inbox management now we're able to manage conversations um, much more effectively there's a lot of really cool things you can do with the api now and that's not even with building automations that's just like handoff protocols and that sort of thing are going to be available so you'll see companies like that sending out emails with you know here look at what we can do now and stuff so it's mm -hmm. a lot of businesses are being affected by this opening of the api 
Um, now I can't talk much into the other things that Instagram rolled out because I'm not an Instagram expert. I'm a chat marketing expert, but I do know that like the live API was also updated and there's a lot of cool things coming out on that side as well on Instagram. So lots of exciting focus. Um, shops will be a big focus for them over there, especially in the, the DM, the messaging aspect of bringing the shops and the DM together because there's a really nice handoff so that your, your automations can kind of pick up conversation and then hand it off very easily to a salesperson based off of tags and conditions. So it's gonna really help a lot of small businesses and large businesses, quite frankly, um, capitalize on all the features that Instagram has to offer. Interesting, interesting. Anybody have thoughts on this? I know you guys are all uh, in some form using Instagram. I know, I, I know Lennon for sure, like with your, with your audience, of artists that you work with um you know i know ash i see your like reels all the time so anybody have thoughts on on how you may be using this um how your clients may be using this you know um I, yeah really i guess curious. that's a question that i would just have for you kelly which is like you know let's say that one of my clients is like i'm just trying to like figure out how to connect deeper with my audience mm -hmm. and is there a benefit to that for like smaller creative creatives or, um, you know, is this limited or, or more beneficial for someone who's like strictly in a business situation? Like, are there, there are things that we could do here as like smaller creatives that, that yeah. would utilize this tool? So there are some restrictions that I should probably go through before completely answering your question. Um, sure. The first one is you have to have a business account. Um, there is chatter about a creator's account being able to utilize this, but basically in order to get started, a business account is preferred. It needs to be connected to a Facebook business account. So see, even if you have a creator's account, it has to be connected to a Facebook business account. You need to be an admin of that Facebook business account in order to connect it. You need to go into your settings on Instagram and make sure that you're allowing messages. Believe it or not, there is a setting to not allow messages. The other thing is as of today or as of F8, two days ago, go um, creators or page Instagram business accounts with 10,000 followers and up now have access everyone else does not yet have access sorry not end up 10,000 to 100,000 so if you're above 100,000 sorry you don't have access yet and then in July tentatively Facebook is giving us July 1st but we all know how Facebook be um, that's going to be 1,000 users to uh, 100,000 and then in August tentatively August 1st we're going to see every it open up to everyone. So those are kind of the initial restrictions. Now, with that said, to answer your question, um, I do think that as long as you fall within those ranges and, and have a business account or a creator's account, that there is absolutely benefit. I know a lot of people, as soon as they hear automation or chatbot or these things, they immediately go to, oh, I can't use that because I'm trying to build a community. Well, I just want to stand up here and first of all, say, if anyone out there knows who I am, you know that community is number one. That's how I run my business. I've got an amazing community and I nerd out on chat marketing. It's not just a chat marketing community. I actually run three different communities on three different topics. So um, it's absolutely possible. Some of the features I think that are gonna be even more amazing for the smaller uh, creator, and not just the smaller creator, but even those creators that are trying to focus more on the community aspect are things like story mention. If someone is mentioning you in a story, then you can set up an automation that says, you know, thank you so much for the, the mention. Do you have a question? Is there anything I could do for you today or what have you? So we can create kind of a little automation there. So we're always grabbing those people, never missing it, even when we're sleeping. Um, and then another one that I use quite like since using this uh, feature is that I create YouTube videos. And, you know, it's always been difficult as a small channel or as a small uh, Instagram account. I have 3000 subscribers or followers, all these different accounts. What do we call it on Instagram? Um, followers over on, on Instagram. I have 3000. So if it weren't for the beta, I wouldn't have access, but I also don't have access to links. And how many of us have wished that we could get our hands on the swipe up, right? Especially as a creator, I'm trying to get as many eyes on my YouTube. YouTube's my priority. So everywhere I share, I want to get people to go watch my YouTube video. Well, now I can do a post on my grid that says, hey, comment below and I'll, sh I'll shoot you over a message with the link. Or I could do a story and I say, 
hit that keyword, you know, YouTube, and I'm gonna shoot you the, the link to this. In fact, if you go to my Instagram account, which it's under the same username as right there, and you type in the word Instacool, then you're gonna get a message that sends you um, a resource, a playlist on my YouTube channel for everything Instagram automations. I have quite a few of those little tricks. So there's, I think personally, that's gonna be the big thing for creators that are creating like YouTube videos or content that we want to send a link or even lead magnets or whatever. We can send links now and we don't have to have 10,000 subscribers or 10,000 followers. So I think that there's a lot of benefit in that. And then there's also a 24 hour rule. So we can't broad, you know, like on Messenger, if you're not familiar, on Messenger, we can send um, broadcast, right? And there's like all these tags and stuff. And not everyone really likes that. Well, on Instagram, we can't do that. It's you have this window. And what the automation allows you to do is create that initial contact. So it's an immediate you know, people don't like waiting, but then we as humans can take over and have an additional conversation. I could follow up with someone after I send them my YouTube link, you know, the next day, hey, did that answer all your questions? Do you have anything else? And I can manually like be in there. So as a small creator, that's something that really is exciting for me. This is super interesting to me because one of the things that I do um, is I have I have, and, and I'm pulling the wool back here, so I may look like a complete <laughs> skis ball here. But, you know, like just not having enough time with having a regular job, running the business, having clients and all this stuff, I still want to make contact with everybody on Instagram. And so when I get a new follower, my assistant sends them a video and we have like four or five different videos that I've shot that address them personally, just minus their name. And then I'm the one, exactly what you said, that follows up with them um, so it's, you know, it's like, I just can't go in and constantly be checking all of them, but the ones that actually respond, that's a much smaller percentage. Cause not everybody's going to be excited that they got a video or they're like, that's kind of creepy, dude. You got a beard. Like, why don't you get off my back? So, <laughs> you know, whatever that is. And, I'm not creepy, but okay. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that, so it sounds like this is a, uh, would be a great workaround for something like that. And then I can put my assistant doing other stuff that would be more beneficial inside the business. I think the one, uh, a lot of pro a lot of things it's great for is just generic, those questions that get asked all the time. I'm a marketing director for a small credit union and I have everything set up on Facebook Messenger and it's literally, what are your services? What hours are you open? Uh, you know, just generic questions that everybody asks at the same time and that, you know, I'm a staff of one, so I couldn't do it without some sort of right. automation. And I think that as we look forward, all creators are becoming a business. You're selling T-shirts, you're selling merch, you're selling, you know, uh, products. And so you have to treat that side of the business, the customer service side, like, hey, how much are the shirts? You know, uh, where do I get the shirt? You know, so things like that, I think, are just as important. This sounds exciting, actually, that uh, me as a creator of one, right? Um, I have I do everything. So for me, I think it will be a little bit easier to, um, you know, engage with my, with my public, right? So, and me having a small community now, it's better to take advantage of it earlier than when I have probably 10,000 plus. So I'm all for it. Anything that helps me out, um, go and, and reach out my community, I will use it and engage with it. So. I've just been sat making notes, literally, like Kelly, you blow my, it's one of those moments <laughs> too, where I'm, like, I'm I actually so quiet. I'm like, <laughs> I wanted, to, I wanted to also really quick, I was pulling up my analytics on Instagram. Now I've been doing two things differently over the past month. I've had access to the automations in beta and I've been using them quite frequently in my stories and what have you. And then I've also been doing a lot more with reels, which are like my new favorite thing, right? I finally got over TikTok and came back, came home. And so here's my, um, just in the past 30 days, I've received 516% more content interactions compared to the month wow. before when I wasn't using these things. And I can attest to this, the, the two biggest posts on my account have automation on it. And like the last one I did had over 48 comments. And I like never get comments on my, I'm a small Instagrammer, so this is huge. I will state though, since I did mention reels, you can't do automations on reels yet. But my workaround is when I make my reels, I have a little call to action that says, DM me this keyword. And if they DM me that keyword, then I can, it'll automate that. 
process of sending them information. So it works on, it works on uh, stories and posts. Yeah, but even if your reels is posted to your grid, which mine all, always are, it won't work. It will work for like a static or a video, but not a reel. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Question. Question from Dan, uh, you know, kind of thinking ahead of the spammy marketers, right? Uh, I hate curious, them. <laughs> Kelly's thoughts, uh, she thinks how Facebook will crack down on uh, the spammy types. Ah, uh, gosh. Will they? First, yeah, got <laughs> such a good question. Such a loaded question. Is, now, these right? are obviously just my thoughts. First of all, shame on them because <laughs> these are the people who ruin everything for everyone. It I mean, is. if you... I've been in messenger marketing, like chat marketing since like 2015, before ManyChat was even around, I was playing with them. And back then it was so innocent and fun and we could do whatever we wanted, everything was open. And then here come those spammy people. And now we have all these rules and it's so convoluted and it's a pain in the butt. So I think first and foremost, uh, Facebook learned a lot from messenger bots, like a lot things have changed over the years, right? Like the rules have changed. They've gone, it's been quite an undertaking to keep up with. Um, so with Instagram, it's become so much simpler, but also it's so tight, right? The rule is basically like you get to do this and that's it. So I think that alone is going to be huge because uh, number one, the the end user, the follower, the non-follower, whoever, they have to make the interaction first and foremost, which is the same on Messenger. So it's not like we can just you know buy a list and start spamming people. That's not a thing. Um, so that right there is a great step in this um, in this sphere to keep kind of spammy away because I have to like message you. I have to take the initiation in order to get messages. And then number two, the nodes or like the blocks when you're building are kind of limited in the respect that like if I use um, a comic growth tool or a keyword trigger, it basically allows me to send you like one node. Um, and in, in some cases, a couple more, but you're limited to what is available in how many messages you can send through the automation. In most cases, you're allowed to send one to two messages. There are cases where you can send more, but it's it's a lot harder to spam, right? It's not like, uh, you know, we all get the request, you know, in the little request, the one who's like, yeah, this t-shirt shop wants you to, you know, be their ambassador, go message them. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, or the people who are like, hey, let me help you buy a whole bunch of followers and they have a crap account themselves. So <laughs> that's not going to be a thing that automations is going to help with. So I think that it's not necessarily going to be easy for spammers to use this technology in a way that they would want. Um, so in the future, I, I don't know if Facebook's going to have to make a ton of adjustments unless they start expanding what's available. And then obviously rules adjustments are going to have to be made. But I will say that if you are using a tool, whether on Messenger or Instagram, you absolutely need to follow the rules because then, I mean, without a doubt, they will shut you down if you are not following the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to say, like, seriously, though, if you guys want a good deal on a bunch of followers, I know a guy. So we can get that hooked up. <laughs> Don't um, do it. It's a trick. Yeah. His name's Rob. He's actually on the stream. <laughs> here's, here's how you get your followers. Everyone go follow everyone on screen. Go get their right. username. That's right. We're down to follow for follow here. So <laughs> I'm not following you back. You just come follow me. <laughs> I oh no, I just clued you already. in. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I'm I'm super excited about it. I think, you know, it's really interesting that men, like that Instagram opened this up. Um, I know Dan was having some internet issues, but he had a comment um earlier this week about like, will this open up Instagram live streams, like the API for the live stream? I know a lot of people that comes up very <laughs> like awesome. regularly. They are uh, gonna be doing more with that. Yeah, rather than like using yellow duck or like- God, would that be lovely? Yeah, yeah. It's so, like Ecamm it out. I mean, even if you're using, e I don't know about you, but I'm, a, I'm using Ecamm as we speak. Um, you can actually go like vertical in the, in the format and everything. You just can't go live unless you're using some random tool. Exactly, exactly. Well, this is awesome. And Kelly, where's, there's so many questions here, I'm sure oh, yeah. that will come up even on the replay <laughs> and stuff. So um, you are the person to answer them. So where, where are some resources? I know Tim asked a question, like, where can I learn more about this? I did share the many chat. Yes, um, that would be the first spot. 
is okay, cool. um, so ManyChat has a free course that covers not only messenger marketing, but also they just released the Instagram automations. It's really easy to get through. Um, and like I said, it's free. It is in the chat. So manychat.com. Um, you can actually go manychat.com forward slash resources. And I think it shows up there as well. But yeah, there you go. Resources forward slash video dash course. You'd think that they would make that a little shorter, but there it is. All right. um, there I am. Hey. Um, and then also uh, ManyChat has a fantastic blog platform with just so many case studies already. Uh, if you go to manychat.com forward slash blog, that's another good place, especially if you like to read. If you want to learn from me, then youtube.com forward slash stellar 24 seven, or just search baby got bot. I have hundreds of videos on the topic, but I just started and you can see I have two videos already on automation. And I actually have one in production right now that's going to be coming out. I, I want to get these out so fast, right? Because it's the hot thing. So um, absolutely check out my YouTube channel. I've been told I'm pretty good at teaching this stuff. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> And awesome. it's fun. Always a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So, if you guys have any other questions, I mean, there's this is a massive like topic. It's a huge and update. I, and I think there's a lot of opportunities here. Before we hop on to the next topic here, uh, Kelly, what is like the most basic automation that everyone should be thinking about oh, for their Instagram? Like the, the most basic one that takes. That, um, oh, 10 probably. Oh, they're all they're all really easy to set up. Honestly, okay. they're like mm -hmm. super simple to set up. Um, I, can I do two? Because there's like two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's one that I think everyone needs, and then there's the one I like the most. Um, so the one everyone needs it's just called a keyword trigger. It's really easy. It can be used in your stories. It can be used like I could tell you right now. Go to Instagram dot com forward slash stellar 24 seven go to my Instagram not on your desktop automations by the way do not work very well on your desktop Instagram mm -hmm. is mobile okay mm -hmm. go to my Instagram DM me the word YouTube and you can test drive it but see I can have that call to action anywhere so that's a keyword trigger by the way you will get something you'll get my YouTube uh, starter guide my checklist guide uh, so check that out but then the second one that is my favorite tool is the comment to message automation which is actually the my first love in chat marketing when i started in chat marketing back in 2015 this is really all there was is you make a comment on a post you get a message we could do that now in instagram so this is a really simple setup if you want to test drive that again go to my youtube or sorry my instagram account stellar 24 7 you'll see a post that says like automation comment below and you can test drive it for yourself but those two are incredibly easy to set up especially the keyword one so easy to set up it's basically like here's the trigger which is whatever keyword you decide and then here's the message i want to send and that's it so awesome. that's the one everyone should have, especially as a creator. I just did them both. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, boom, boom. It literally was like, bang, bang, while you're talking. I was like, I'm going to talk over you now and go, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> see, it's like magic. <laughs> yeah, I just saw everybody like heads down on their phone. I'm like, oh, okay, that's everybody's. <laughs> yeah, play with it. Have fun you with it. You know it. Very cool. And oh, Very by cool. the way, um, ManyChat is, if you are brand new to ManyChat, and you do not connect the messenger side of it, you can try this feature for free all summer long through August. If you're, but as soon as you connect a many chat um, or for a Facebook account to do messenger, it like it takes away the trial. So if you wanna try it all, then just DM me on Instagram or whatever. And I will personally, cause I don't have a bot for this. I will personally send you information about, um, I have a code. I should set that up, right? I have a um, code to get you 30 days of pro for free. And that will give you all the free features, including messenger. Sweet. That's all cool. right. All right. Everybody. Yeah. Connect with Kelly, get, get that, try it out. Cause I think this is awesome. Like even just, you know, uh, I guess like siphoning emails, like building an email oh. list from yeah. Instagram. I think it's powerful. Like that's, we talk about that for like YouTube creators all the time. Same thing with Instagram, right? Like you got to yes. you know, email list. So, I'm telling you, community is your email list and your community are the future of business, if not already. Like this is something every creator needs to be focused on. And everywhere I go, I'm trying to drive people. Even if you watch my YouTube videos, I always have a call to action. Go join my Facebook group because that's my priority, right? The community. So I'm always driving that. So in Instagram, it's very likely going to be a similar thing for me. So whatever your goal is, think about your goal before you, you know, start building these automations and then let's build the automations to really feed into that goal, whether it's building an email list or a Facebook community or what have you. Love it. 
Love it. I could see this really handy as we get back into, um, I'd actually did an event last night. So Mm -hmm. people are getting vaccinated, you know, in-person events are coming and I get asked all the, you know, I try to say, oh, I'm the co-host of this stream show and you have to go through this whole explanation. It would be really cool just to say, hey, just DM me on, you know, uh, Instagram and get the link. So that's pretty cool. And, you know, another really quick idea that Jen Herman brought up in our talk yesterday that I thought was brilliant, and I think a lot of us as creators will love this, is if you are in a partnership with a brand, Robbie will love this, and you're doing like um, an affiliate or an influencer program, you can actually create a code with that influencer's name. And then the call out on Instagram when they do stories and stuff is like, hey, go go message to Buddy the word Kelly, and they're going to send you that free trial. And so now, TubeBuddy has a way of tracking how many people are coming in because of me doing shout outs. So there's that's like amazing. this other aspect that's really cool as well. And we can have an automation that then comes up and, and actually in the flow, in the back end, we can have like a ticker that basically is counting every time this keyword comes in that we've set up. So the Kelly keyword, so they can easily track that. But then on the other side, it just sends the message like, oh, cool. Th- you know, Thanks to Kelly for sending you over. Here's that trial link. Oh, I love that. I love Bam. that. Bam. Yeah, we pretty got, cool yeah. stuff. We're gonna mm-hmm. get Judah. Judah, our social media manager, to like just uh, spend a week on this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I Kelly. consult, yeah. I build. <laughs> yes, yes. By the way, yes. If you guys need actual like hands-on assistance with this stuff, uh, I do that stuff. Connect with Kelly. Connect with Kelly. This is great. Um, awesome. Okay, let's um, let's move on again. If you guys have any questions about this, you know, the many chat, um, anything around that connect with Kelly. Um, I want to jump into this. This is actually Graham. Graham, if you want to expand on this next sort of thought or topic, every platform is Clubhouse. What's next? What's what's your thought? Oh, there? yes. Every, every <laughs> form is Clubhouse. I don't know if Graham. Oh, there. yeah. So this Graham. has been one of these interesting things where um, I've been using Clubhouse for a while, but now that they have it where, you know, there's now Twitter has like a Clubhouse feature where you can have talks in it. Uh, Facebook sort of come out with, it, I think, uh, I'm surprised YouTube hasn't done something yet, but like everyone sort of got now these chat only rooms. So like where we're streaming with video here and, you know, we can hear the six of us and there's a bunch of other people listening, you know, with Clubhouse, it's an audio only platform, which, you know, you can theoretically do almost everywhere. And it seems like whoops, every single uh, platform is trying to come up with some version of Clubhouse and everyone seems to be trying to like copy what everyone else is doing. Like, again, you have uh YouTube trying to pretend to be TikTok and stuff like this. So it's kind of interesting <laughs> as a creator because you suddenly go and say, ooh, there's all this cool stuff to do, but then you have to decide where you're going to spend your time. And I've seen some people go really hard on Clubhouse and some people are now going like really hard on the Twitter. Like I'm noticing some people always have like a Twitter group now for discussions almost always up whenever I jump onto Twitter. So it's sort of an interesting one. And I'm just for the group here and I guess people in the chat, like, is this something where you're trying them all out or are you going to stick with clubhouse now, or are you going to like play around and see what works for building communities? Cause obviously there's only so many hours in the day. I like Twitter more for some reason. I like the Twitter spaces a little bit more than clubhouse because clubhouse can get a lot of um, unwanted stuff. Let's put it that way. But I'd rather have um, Twitter because it's my, probably my audience anyway. So I don't know. It's more targeted for me. I like Twitter as well. I just, there's just like you said, so many tools. This is why I got out of social media marketing because it, back when I started, it was like Facebook and Twitter and that's it. And that was like all the things. But I do think it's going to be a, a matter of all, most of like digital marketers are going to need to test to figure out where is my audience and which features are going to fit my needs. But I do think that you need to go where your audience is. It's like I said in the beginning where now I'm like back home with my reels. I tried TikTok for a year and then I just started dabbling in reels and all of a sudden it's like it blows up. I'm like, okay, well now I know where I need to be and don't waste (laughs) your time where you don't need to be. You don't have to be everywhere. I I, I struggle with Clubhouse. I think that Twitter for me would be be an absolute no brainer because I think the problem that Clubhouse has is there's no way of, when you're not live, you're not live. Like that's it. So Mm -hmm. all it does. And it actually, I found when I was doing it, it was losing me business because people were saying, well, you're spending all your days on clubhouse. You can't be that busy. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I am. I just haven't done any of the work I was supposed to have done. Um, (laughs) I'm still really busy. (laughs) I'm still doubly busy now. Um, So I think Twitter, I think, I think Twitter. That's the best answer. (laughs) 
Yeah, you know, I think Twitter's a no-brainer, personally. Um, I think it's probably the least alive Twitter needs to bring new repeat audience to it. Yeah. And I think it could, I just think Clubhouse, in my opinion, I do a Clubhouse, room, I don't do the room, I'm in a room every Monday and I literally use it to do my admin. You know, I sit and do my admin and think, okay, I'll sit and do my admin for two hours and listen to a load of people brag about how great they are. Um, <laughs> and that's fine, you know, that's, that's absolutely fine. It's different here. It's nicer on a Friday. Um, <laughs> but oh, I yeah, personally that's, think... That's <laughs> It is. I, I think. I think that. I think that it's very, very good. But I think Twitter will win. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Twitter will win. And I agree with Kelly you guys, completely about, yeah. about what you said about sticking to the platform that you like and also that your audience likes. I think That's I can good. tell yeah. everybody here as an early adopter. So you're going to try them all. I know that you guys are going to try it all and have the YouTube video. I think Doctor Elo with the picture Clubhouse. What's next? Right. I know. Right. We're all going to do that. <laughs> um, and it's really what I try to look at is who's offering services. So, you know, who's monetizing faster, who's giving you more control, who's verifying you, who's doing this, doing that, and then having to look at exactly who your target audience is. So, you know, TikTok is huge, but if it didn't work, you know, for Kelly, she realized that soon and got off. So I think that's, you know, always going to be the thing for all these platforms. Cause I started when this was, you know, there was something called pounce. That was the first social media I was on built by Kevin Rose and then came Twitter. Right. And that was the only thing for the longest time. Um, so we'll all try them. And I think, you know, they all stream, they all have reels, they all have this. It's really hard for a creator, but you just had to really, really concentrate. And I do this for clients and for my job is you got to bring people back and say, who is your target audience? How old are they? What are they like? What do they look at? You know, not because, hey, all the kids are on TikTok. I do. I need to be too. You got to look <laughs> yeah. at your audience. So do the research and figure out who you're who you're talking to. The it's squirrel really effect. So, so it's Cage really the squirrels. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because I find like TikTok. Um, I actually I paid for a coach to coach me in it. I built <laughs> an audience quick. I did all this stuff. I worked with clients, got them on it, and six months later, they've done really well. They've got big views. They've got big following but the leads are terrible. Like they're terrible because the audience is not the right audience. And this is something that we're, and one of my good friends is a TikTok coach. And I was like, the issue is because the age range is so so young and it is young. And I know you'll hear, you'll hear marketers and they'll go, no, everyone's on it. And I'm like, I think you're telling yourself that because you want to justify the fact that it's an early adopter platform and you can get millions of views on it. But the reality is, and it's funny you said about Kelly about reels, same client moved the videos over to Reels. He's a he's a mortgage broker. Moved mm -hmm. it over to Reels. He lands business because yeah. that's where people are. They're not. He's right. not, It's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It's just weird. I think we we need to see uh, be really really realistic on who is the audience and who is actually right. using it. What and I think you? sorry to that point. I yeah. think that it's also important to understand that just because your audience might be on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. I love spending hours on That's TikTok, right. wasting <laughs> yeah, time, but I'm not buying from TikTok, okay? Yeah. Because I buy stuff off of Instagram all the time. I'm an old millennial. So yeah, we might be there, but I'm not buying products like the Gen Zs might be buying, you know, like that's a different reason why I'm there. So understand that your, you might think your audience is there, but it's not for the purpose that you need to do your business. What about, I think I'd like to hear Lennon's, yeah, Lennon's input on your creative uh, talent. Well, I think it's like, cause the way I approach first with anybody that I'm trying to work with is like, what's your strength? Is your strength video? Is your strength audio? Is your strength text? Like, because, you know, showing up and trying to do something that's uncomfortable for a long time is just gonna lead to more burnout from the beginning, if you're trying to grow something. And I never want to lead somebody down this road of like, we're just going to grind it out like everybody else does, because that's just a recipe for like a lack of real creativity and real heart behind what you do. Because we mm -hmm. all know that like the thing that makes us stand out on these platforms is not the fact that we're doing a bunch of freaking trends. It's the fact that we show up and be our authentic selves in yes. some way, shape or form. Nailed and it. so it's not like the thing to me is, yes, mm. your, where your audience is at is important, but we are also building cultures on each of these platforms that are very different. So when I look at Instagram, it is a culture of buying. 
TikTok is not a culture of buying. So we may have the same, like all the audiences may be spread across. The marketers may not be wrong, but it's not a culture there, I don't think yet, of like, I'm here to buy, which is what I think you were saying, Kelly. It's like yeah. we show up there strictly for entertainment. Well, I think it, do I think it may lead to buying culture? Sure. I think everything will eventually. But, you know, so to mm -hmm. be an early adopter and just know that, like, I'm going to show up here and have fun with it. That's a different story mm -hmm. um, and figure out how I can just engage and grow more community. But, yeah, we got to be realistic about it. And then we also just have to, like, do what we really love to do the most because people will see that it may not be the Word. biggest audience, but that is never the point. Like the best audience is not always the biggest. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Ash, wasn't it you that was saying like, um, yeah. you know, you had a friend well, that did a live stream that had a bunch of people show up, but it didn't lead to any business. But then you did like, or, or another friend yeah. did a live stream with a smaller audience, but led to, you know, several leads and then eventually paying yeah. clients. Like who is really winning, right? Like, the vanity number of views yeah, versus well, like actual, you know, that's the clients. battle I have every single day. Like I literally yeah. just interviewed somebody for the podcast, um, Ed Lawrence from film booth on YouTube. Yeah, so he's, just here. Had... he's here. He's here. Ed's here. Yeah. Checking. Is he? Yeah. He's going to say, he has told him to come. Um, but I was chatting to him about that myself as well. There he is. Um, and, um, I was saying, you know, I, I do live streams on LinkedIn and I get business from it. But if you looked at that, you would never think I would, you would literally mm -hmm. think, God, this actually to the point where I had one client say to me, I kept thinking, oh, bless him. He turns up every day and he's trying. And I was like, that one live stream like generated me like four leads just from as in four high paying, high ticket leads. And also a load of people jump on my course. I was like, it's what you use it for. And then I have a client who uses TikTok and she'll generate on, on like LinkedIn. She'll, she'll repurpose it to LinkedIn and she'll get 200, 300, 400 likes, tons of comments, so much engagement. And then but every time we have a chat, she goes, it's not converting any business. And I'm like, because you're not, it's not serving the problem that you actually solve. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what the issue is, but it's really hard. And I was literally just saying this, it's fine up there. Yeah. Film booth. So it says to Ed is that's the issue. You know, what do you do? You have to, you're, you're drawn naturally as humans for acceptance. You want to look like you're popular. It's really hard. You want yeah. the views, you want the subscribers. And I said this to my wife yesterday. I was like, no matter how much I know that's the wrong thing, it's still hard not to, judge yourself and measure yourself against that the, the hard part though is because if you want to get to this next level with youtube or facebook or these mini chat ten thousand like you know so there's all these you know mm -hmm. you got to get to this monetization level if you want to monetize you got to get a thousand followers you got to have right, this many right. hours whether it's twitch whether it's you know facebook mm -hmm. gaming whether it's you know all these they have they put these caps on there so they're you know encouraging us to produce 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 content because that's what they're making money off of mm -hmm. so sometimes that's the you know the unfair part when you're you have great content you you know we're already monetized we have sponsors we have brand deals but we don't you know we have 180 what 190 followers on youtube right so but we can't unlock that other stuff yet so we had to find different ways so i kind of wish they would you know release some of that like, yeah. like linkedin i've talked with one of the developers at linkedin that does over live. I can't get on LinkedIn live. I pay a I subscription for freaking LinkedIn. I'm like, you know, I pay you $35 a month. Give me the damn thing. <laughs> Talk to them. I mean, directly. And they're like, well, we'll think about it. Send me the email that we sent you. Here's the email you sent me oh five God. times. I will get back to you still nothing. So that yeah. some of that can get really frustrating, you know, with, um, these platforms putting these limits on, um, you know, on creative, especially well, pay be, for it. it would be nice to, It'd I want to go nice back to Clubhouse like a little bit. I know we're talking everything. about the, the TikTok and Reels and stuff, but the original thought here was with Clubhouse. Like going back to there was a there's a comment here by Dan. You know something around. Um, you know he didn't realize that there are so many eight figure millionaires, <laughs> you know, billionaires here. Um, and I get that too. Like what? I wonder. And it really, you know, it's really interesting. Sort of like human psychology of these rooms have ma these are massive rooms. There's like hundreds of people tuning in all listening on their phone. Um, and uh, why why is that? Like, so out of those people, like we all know here as like content creators and educators that a lot of these people aren't going to take the advice of these, you know, millionaires and billionaires, but they're there. Like, so is it is it sort of that same psyche of people that watch Gary V videos and, and after they watch the videos, they feel 
like they did something, but they don't actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, that. Probably. I is love it, that. that. You know, I think is that. it that? Like, what is what is the pull there? Because I, I, think there, I think there's like, there's a lot of business being, there's a lot of like deals being done um, and clients being generated through Clubhouse and other platforms. Like, By the way, they're being generated on DMs and Instagram. I just wanted to point yeah. that out really quick. Yeah, they are. You're right there. They're very right. <laughs> just, you know, tie them yeah. together, y'all. Yeah. yeah, if people yeah, on Clubhouse, they say, right. send me a DM. So yeah, what's your, what's your thoughts to that? Like, I don't but know. I, like, I'm just, I mean, I think I we all with that, right? Yeah. I think even our industry, if you look at streaming as an industry, we're all trying to teach the same thing. I'm trying to teach the same thing that Dr. Elo's doing. I started mm-hmm. watching, you know, David Foster and Loria and the live streaming pros. I mean, and I know people that have paid for coaches that live stream that still watch our show that ask the advice and they, they just keep asking and they're not doing so i think that's yeah. part of it You're yeah there's right. a lot you, of people who have fear of taking action right so and i think that things like clubhouse it's a little easier because you're semi-anonymous right you're not on camera that's one thing i've noticed for people and the other is is like oh my god i was in the same room as puff daddy oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you know now that's it's true. different if you had you know years ago there was something called seismic and it was a video chat platform yeah. i was all on it and I had a video conversation with John Cleese and I had that video clip forever until they closed this, you know, and I was like, John Cleese said my name and he was talking with me. That's different than saying, man, I was in a room with 10,000 people and Puff Daddy was, my icon was next to Puff Daddy's. Oh my God. You know? <laughs> and it did. This get, is what we're dealing with now. Right? And I jumped on when it was early adopter. I got a lot of people on it. I thought it was amazing. But then you guys are clearly like using said, Clubhouse for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, no, it got to completely spammy with, you know, <laughs> I'm the eight ones. figure, you know. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Going secrets. back to the original comment about like all of these, it's almost like con men, right? Or con women coming in and saying like, here's this, here's that. Why do they get big followings? My theory is that they are giving you easy solutions and I think people are looking for the easy way to be rich. And I am also under the impression, uh, very much believing yeah. that most of those people <laughs> spitting those things in Clubhouse that are like the the fake preneurs mm. are not, they're, they're like behind the scenes. They're like, oh yeah, I made $2 million. And I was like, show me the receipts. How much did you spend? <laughs> you know, so like going back to that, I think there's a lot of the people fear of do fear of actually taking action right and there and there's mm-hmm. a lot of people that are just going to stay that way and they're never going to level up but it's easier to go and listen to these people who are like oh yeah all you have to do is this three steps and let me talk you about it and if you go get my course you're guaranteed to make a million and i'm like that dude there's no here's here's the real truth there is no easy way no. <laughs> unless you're no, lucky loto that's it. I think I think anybody doing like YouTube streaming or YouTube videos or anything like that are going to tell you it's not easy. Like, no. like even just like a year, what year and a half in now, right now, it's like thousands and thousands of hours. And you look at the bank account and you're going like, well, I'm hoping it'll go up at some point. Like, it's <laughs> not an easy thing to do. There's no quick, easy solution. And even the people who t- uh, just bounce up really well, yeah, they, they might bounce up to like five, six, seven, ten thousand subscribers, but that's still not a lot. And they still have a long way to go before they actually like see money money rolling in and it's just you know yeah there's people like how can i do this in a day it's like (laughs) wow i made three dollars in a video exactly it's like it's not it's not (laughs) an easy thing to do but the thing well, that's really woo-hoo. interesting about that, so that's really because I was. I love I've been my three dollar videos. Don't knock them. <laughs> I've been talking about this with people for re- recently because I've been doing my own research for my podcast and going into YouTube and stuff like that. And what I've noticed is, and I said this to a few people, I was like, everybody seems to celebrate as with, with regards to like these three easy steps. It's me. It's is it mediocrity? Like easy. Everything is. If you look, if you if you look online, and it says how many followers do, how many videos do I need to upload to be successful on YouTube. You're not, you're not seeing a real thing. You're seeing the minimum amount. It's always, you only need to do this much. You only have to do this. And none of it is actually like, then they'll do a case study, but none of it's accurate because the reality is, and it reminds me, I was an actor in London and it reminds me of the hearing that story. There was the guy in the coffee shop or the girl in the coffee shop where the producer bumped into them and they, they became Hollywood famous. And, they're, 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 it's not, and then they use a case study where they can say that happens. But the reality is you make 300, 400 rubbish videos and people don't watch and you learn. Mm-hmm. But if you say that, and that's why I think Clubhouse was Nobody right wants. for it, was no one wants to hear it. So no then, And I remember 
they don't. And I remember getting in Clubhouse and saying that and then going, and then, and then it kind of like, it's like a quiet room, you know? Yeah, like, nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. It was a sad trombone, man. Give me the easy like, guy. Wait, what? What? That, that's yeah, the other guy comes on and goes, I can do it in three weeks. Three simple steps. And he's like, <laughs> do you know what? That guy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Where's that five-step that. plan that you want me to give, Check give back. me if I DM you? Like, that's yeah. what. <laughs> Send Here's me what YouTube I want. on Instagram. That's I want fine. you to go watch that guy and then come back to me in the three weeks. Tell me how it went. And then we'll talk. And then we'll talk. It's mad. It is. a, yeah. I, and, and I've been saying this a lot in my stuff is like, why are we so afraid of serving a small audience? Mm -hmm. Like a thousand true what, fans. Yeah. What is our fear behind that as like people that put stuff out? And I guess it's, it, it is status, right? It's the fear of like somebody not taking us seriously, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, it's based on a, a, a follower count, but it's like, it, if, and, and I, you know, doing stuff at video creators, we've, you know, I've worked with clients with zero subscribers and some with millions, you know, and help them all grow. But the the thing that I that I always like that I always talk about with all of them is like it doesn't matter what level they are, they're all complaining about the same thing. You know, they all just want more. <laughs> and so it's like, okay, well then let's just like let that go and trust that that's going to be the issue forever. You yeah. know, and quit yeah. worrying about that and just like now we can just go. And we'll just know that forever we'll want more. One of the things that I helped me when we first started this stream show with was strict, and we were, we'd talk every day about what's the business plan, what's the business model. I've been an entrepreneur forever. I've done you know all this kind of streaming since two thousand eight, and then finally it just got stressful. You know what? It's just a calling card for us. You know, we've made side deals for ourselves. I use it when I'm out in the community. Uh, you know, people say they watch my show. I was at an event last night. They're like, man, your stream looks so professional. So we just say, you know what, this is what we do. You can go watch our show every Sunday night and it's kind of a calling card of who we are and then the rest will happen. And you just have to get to that point where you're like, you know, we're still aggressive with marketing to, you know, <clears throat> trying to provide services for other companies. But, you know, I know it's not going to be, I'm not going to be Mr. Beast tomorrow. And, and people, what I would wish they would understand is these people that are that big have huge teams behind them. You know, they've been, they started years ago. They've got a large team behind them. They've got editors, they've got writers, they got producers, right. they got someone doing the deals for them, you know, and that's, that's kind of unfair when you see that there was a article yesterday, you know, 30 billion, you know, 30 billion worth of money spent from YouTube on creators, you know, right. it wasn't me. I, mean, <laughs> I, I think, well, I mean, but I think about that a lot like, though. Oh, you know, it's, it could be me. I could be that one person that blows up and you know, you can maybe. If you work but hard. it still comes down to like self self evaluation yeah, and self value, and team, right? Sure. Like well, if you a, don't if you don't value yourself enough to charge the money that you that you deserve, true, then you're going to have mm -hmm. problems, yeah. right? And that's what everybody's wow. trying to do is they want the shortcut and also to undervalue themselves. Like, how can I be the cheapest, fastest growing thing in the world? It's like. Mm -hmm. You are swimming in the biggest pond possible right now. Like, <laughs> right. you know, charge the money you're worth and do the stuff you're good at. Like, quit worrying about having the biggest audience. I think, too, um, Eileen's point is that there is a culture of needing big audiences and it perpetuates itself because the platforms reward big creators. Um, but I do want to point out to that point about, you know, charging what you're worth. I landed the ManyChat contract to do their course and made a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money um, <laughs> that year, not just with ManyChat, but a lot of others. And I had 2,000 YouTube subscribers at that point. So you don't need a big audience. You need to create amazing content and people will take note. I got paid $14,000 to go to Australia and speak for three hours. Come so on. like th this is just one or two examples of, it's possible to be a small creator and make a lot of money, but you have to focus on the right things. Don't focus on monetization. You're not going to make any money as a small YouTuber or creator at monetization. And don't align yourself with brands who are just focused on your follower count. Focus, like let them focus on your content, on you as a personality, on your authenticity as was brought up earlier. But then yes, exactly. Go and charge what you're worth and then it's it gets easier because it gets easier every time you say no this is what i'm worth or this is the type of content i'm putting out and i'm not going to focus 
do I want to grow my YouTube, you know, subscriber count, my Instagram follower? Account? Yeah, of course. Like who doesn't, but is that my focus? Hell no. Because I know I can go out and make more money just creating awesome freaking content and showing up as my authentic self that makes me different than anyone else out there teaching what I'm teaching. And that's the difference. So is, no, there, a, is there a bomb yeah. sound around? Is there a bomb sound? <laughs> I have a caliente sound from. Um, caliente. The other thing that I found out is yeah. just if we're in the service industry, Boom. I talked to one of my vendors or one of our sponsors, and I just had the point blank conversation with them and said, I know you're the marketing person. I'm a marketing person. I know what, you know, I know the world. How can we help solve problems for you? I'm not asking for a sponsorship to, for my vanity sake. What do you need out of this? And right. so a lot of people are like, well, I need, you know, this person was like, I need five videos. I need five videos that cover this, this, and this. I'm like, done. We can yeah. build that into the content that we're doing. And yeah, that that's was how the I value. It too. That I was the value. To, you right. want to go to the partner, the brand, the brand, right? And instead right. of being like, Oh yeah, just pay me fifteen hundred dollars a month, and like you exactly. can just you know no go to them and say here are some options. Here I can create videos for your account, for your YouTube channel, so that you own them and you can have a different flavor. Or I could do it for my account, and we can leverage my audience. Or we can do this, so we could like present them with your strength. I don't know about y'all, but my strength is not necessarily my numbers because I'm I'm like focused on the quality, not the quantity, but my strength is my content and the way I personally present it. So go with that. Bam. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry, I get really passionate about this. Topic. I love it. I'm fine today. <laughs> Kelly's out. Make that money. Make that money. <laughs> Making money moves <laughs> over here. Come on now. That's what I mean. It's, that's the joke between Strick and I, you know, yeah. dancing during the countdown. We said we don't dance during the countdown. We countdown. We make money moves. <laughs> money moves. I actually have a shirt in my my t-shirt chore that's like hashtag money moves because that's there you how go. we do. There you go. There you go. Hey, uh, this is awesome. I, I mean, we could talk about, I think, monetization and all these things. Uh, the one of the things Such about YouTube, topic. the YouTube partnership program, that is kind of like, I love it. I love that there is a YouTube partnership program. They share revenue with their with their creators. But at the same time, I think it's a bit of a distraction for a lot of creators because they're trying yes. to get to that. And then they're like not they're not building the off platform revenue platforms, you know, like, you know, courses and, and the big money is off platform, which is yeah, which is way more money than, you know, the the clicks. Right. And um, the AdSense. So, yeah, it's I mean, there there's what other platforms do that, right, where they're sharing revenue. I think Facebook does it a little bit, but mm -hmm. not too many Facebook. people really care to do that Twitch um, as well Facebook Twitch, gaming yeah. is big but um yeah I, I have a Facebook gaming page and one thing I and I haven't I haven't done any gaming lately but what I did like about them is they do you know they send updates they send help they ask I mean so they are pretty supportive and I think that's pretty good um and I see YouTube is picking that up as well too um LinkedIn she'd learn from them um so another thing when people choose a platform is to look at how much support are you getting from that platform? Mm. So um, I found that it was easier to get support quicker on Facebook because they were trying, they're, you know, they're trying to get in the game quick. So they drop Which the numbers, surprising. just sign up. We'll, we'll make you affiliate, whatever, you know, but it does work. So, you know, um, you know, so looking at the platforms and the services that, that they give you are, are awesome too. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, Ed from Film Booth just says Instagram TV just started. So that's interesting. I didn't know that. Paying so creators. Yeah. Paying creators. It's great. As someone who does Instagram, Kelly, do you think it's worth using IGTV? Because I always find that really, I mean, cause I've, only because I've got you there for, well, quickly right. ask. Because it's a I, really hard question that I would. It is. It's a great question. Yeah. I, I like, I'm no Instagram expert, like I mentioned before, but I actually was an early adopter of Instagram TV. I had like a series of videos I did forever. And I have this problem with being an early adopter. I don't know if you guys ever run into this, but you become an early adopter and you're so early that it's like crickets. So it was crickets for so long. I have not touched IGTV in probably a year, a year and a half. I don't even know how long it's been out, but like that first year, Every si I had something going out every day and it was beautiful and it's great. And now it's like, do I have interest in it? I don't know if I do what maybe if I wanted to go play with it right now, my focus is the reels in terms of content on IG and reels is killing it for me right now. Yeah. And I don't even get that many views like necessarily, you know, it's hit or miss, but it's still helping my account. So 
it's an interesting one because I know say, IGTV. If you upload direct to the desktop, you can upload to an hour, which is like yeah. ridiculous. You know, like that's insane. Yeah. You know, like it's 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 mad. Like you can yeah from the phone. I think it's fifteen minutes, and then it's an hour from desktop. And so I've kind of, seen shows on there. Like I subscribe to shows on there that are just. Yeah phenomenal like they are as if you're watching youtube but they are made you could tell produced and made for the platform and i think that's the difference right yeah. is create so many i love yo i love recreating like t repurposing that's my jam love it but i also know that some platforms deserve their own style and production and yeah. i think igtv is going to be one of those i think i don't think you're going to be able to take a youtube video necessarily unless you're really killer at thinking ahead and understanding how you're going to edit individually mm -hmm. it's going to be tough um i think it's better to create for that platform in that case but again definitely I'm no expert on it yeah i like that i, I think for every platform you should make uh, uh specific content so it doesn't look awkward like uh, uh when you transfer stuff from from TikTok into, um, I don't know, uh, YouTube or something. It, it looks really weird. It does look weird, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just hard though, isn't it? That's the only thing. Like, is it when is. you bring that, when you bring that strategy to someone who is like, uh, like uh, people like us who are creators, it's kind of like a, yeah, let's do it. I'm happy with that because it's also our hobby. Do you know what I mean? But I find when you approach a business owner and say, look, what you got to do? They don't have time for that. They don't yeah, have time. They're lucky mm -hmm. enough. They've got time to do a one video a week or a one, mm -hmm. let alone go, okay, every platform requires a different, approach this yeah, is why um, i think like digital marketing positions like i mentioned i've been in social media marketing for a long time got out of it but i think for a long time the past couple of years companies were like you we want one person to do all the things and it's just not realistic yeah. but now you're seeing a new focus starting to emerge where businesses are hiring like a TikTok manager, an yeah. Instagram manager. And I think that's going to be the future of the platform. And that's how at least the companies who can afford it are going to win that game because then you have an individual. But the smaller companies, they're just going to have to get mad skills at editing and repurposing content. All I ever see is, all I ever see is for $35,000, you need 10 years experience in marketing and you need to be able to edit. <laughs> you know, that's why I got out of that BS. You know, so I'm not there for it. it. Shoot, edit. It is great. Mm -hmm. A, you know, Adobe Suite right. Creative Suite. Yeah, like, they <laughs> be a graphic everything. designer, a copywriter, ads. Like, come on. Dude. <laughs> I do all that, but not for thirty five thousand. Know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you know how much that would cost? Seriously. I, I mean, they but they they're trying all the time to hire people. I had people call me all the time, like, "How do I hire somebody to do what you do for my business?" I'm like, "Offer real money. You know, <laughs> pay somebody some solid, not just a, well, I got a girl." Like, a friend, friend told me the other day, she's, I got a know, girl. He sells, yeah, he sells TV ads, you know, TV. She, they're always, he said, I got a girl that does my marketing, you know, so she's out of college. Girl. She's, she's good on social media, you know, but they're, you know, they're trying to get her for, you know, $12 an hour. And it's just not, you know, realistic. You know, these companies have to start getting on this. Stop lowballing no people. I agree. Yep. <laughs> Probably will yeah, over time, time changes, isn't it? Communication. They're going to have to, right? More important. Yeah. And like, yeah, you know, what's gone on this last year has hugely changed that. Right. You know, I made a joke, probably you guys or all, all of us in a very similar industry. Last year or 18 months ago, people kind of would bump into me and be like, what do you do? And they kind of feel as a bit like a, ha, ah, that's kind of sweet, bless you. And all of a sudden it was like, when it when everything kind of really went down, it was like my phone wouldn't stop ringing. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I don't know what you do, but can you fix this? And all of a sudden it was valuable, you know? So I think it's, yep. um, we're going to, see that maybe change in another maybe five years you'll probably see like a change. digital renaissance yeah. yeah yeah absolutely communication is key absolutely all right we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here real quick but um before we go uh one last sort of quick topic you know the world's opening up summer is around i mean for us up here summer is around the corner uh what do you guys, what do you guys think of uh you know people are getting out to in-person stuff you know the last year and a half has been like very much online virtual summits what do you guys see happening in in this space? I love the, it. You know, over the getting back year. to normal conferences. I'm going to people a video already. I'm already booked. <laughs> You're already I'm ready. I am ready. Got your and hotel. it's in October. <laughs> I think everybody's, you know, like see where I'm. I did a business after hours event last night. You know, it's for us. If you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask, and you know, everybody's just 
you know, it is kind of scary, you know, because they are just more forget it. We're back to normal, baby, you know, but they're going to push <laughs> as hard as they can. I used to work in the tourism industry for the state of Arkansas and traveled all over to all these conferences. And there's a lot of money that are made at these conferences, a lot of deals that are done, you know, and everybody is just needing to get, you know, you have one VidCon in your town. That's what I did. Used to go try to get people to come to your town. You know, it's millions of dollars. So they're going to be pushing for it. You know, um, everyone's going to be it's pushing to get back to normal. I feel like 2021 this year is going to be the year that we're excited, but apprehensive kind of like, mm. I don't know. A lot. I'm an introvert. So I've like gone deeper into my introversion. I'm like, I could care less about conferences, <laughs> but I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm dipping my toe <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's try this out. And then next year, every, now, now, okay, now we know it's cool. We can hug kind of. And I think 2022 will be the year that it really starts as long as, you know, nothing crazy happens between the well, I ain't hugging anybody yet. Nah, no. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm not planning any conferences myself this just year, live. but that's just because anxiety. I'm like humans. Oh. If 2022 is up back to normal, 100, percent does live video still grow? Yes, it will. I think it does. Okay. I think it does. I think a lot. I think. Of I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I think. Yeah. Go, Graham. You think he froze? Oh, okay. wait, there he is. Oh, Content I guess planning. me or is it? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Graham. <laughs> good okay yeah so i think live video is going to still be a purpose i think it's just going to change what that purpose is so instead of being like more conference-based or having people talking to each other um and trying to do that i think you're going to see it where it's going to be more educational in terms of teaching people okay. what you're going to see i think you're going to see live videos like we're oh, i froze up there yeah i think he's on the right track i get where he's going i agree <laughs> He's like waking us up. I agree. I think that it's, you know, it it's going to allow us to continue to educate, but in a more interactive way yeah, and yeah. reach those audiences. Listen, like think of it this way. There's so many going back to small creators, like go do a live, go do video and you get like 20 people or 10 people that show up or five people that show up. Mm -hmm. Yo, like seriously, where else are you going to be able to sit in your pajama? I am wearing pajama pants, you guys. <laughs> and I am able to get in front of an audience. Are you kidding me? Like, this is brilliant. Yeah. That's going to um, hurt. And I've also spoken in front of hundreds of people on a stage. And I'm going to tell you, you know what converts better than hundreds of people on a stage? A YouTube video. I'm telling you right now. So like, I still think that there's an immense amount of benefit to video over the live aspect. But I think that as a creator, as an educator, as someone who's selling my product and I am the product, I think video is actually more powerful than in person in the aspect of an audience. But I do think conferences, money is made in the networking. Yeah, so right, that's right. the difference. On a, yep. on a selfish note as well, just with this, I'm quite happy for it to all open up. I'm like you, Kelly, I won't be going. I'm a bit nervous and I'm, I'm quite happy <laughs> just sitting in a, sitting in my own room where no one can come near me um, in a phone padded cell. Um, but like <laughs> I, I am quite excited for, and it sounds a bit silly, but when, when COVID, this all kind of hit, um, it felt to me on social media and on YouTube and everything, it was like um, January at the gym, you know, everybody appeared and I'm quite excited for all of the kind of people who aren't really taking it the seriously to just disappear yeah. so that we can maybe, because it, it kind of felt a bit crowded and I'm not, I don't mean that in a selfish way, but just purely there's, there's a lot, you know, everyone be like, are you really doing live video? Are you doing, you know, it's that type of thing. I think that the people who have established that audience, they'll probably find it gets better if there's if they've actually invested in it i think anyway i've seen it. people fall off you know they've been falling off they don't stream okay. and go live like they used to that's yeah. okay bye bye yeah. <laughs> less more for us some of us had to go mm -hmm. back to work so that's the that's the hard this thing. is work <laughs> yeah that's right i have three jobs don't tell so my wife this is not work gosh <laughs> that's how i pay the bills y'all i don't know about you <laughs> make those brand deals those, those brand deals yes no, this is good. This is good. I know we're over time. So let's let's wrap it up. Everybody's links. You guys, if you are watching this on the replay or live, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, all the links to everyone here is in the description. So go make sure you follow them. Uh, learn about Kelly and her many chat, all the things, yeah. Lennon, Ash, uh, Dr. Elo, Brent. Uh, I know Graham was here as well and Dan as well. So everyone's links is down below. Um, any final words, any final thoughts uh, from the past week kind of going to next um, from anyone here, 
for the audience? Stay busy. Stay busy. I have a final word that I think kind of personifies a lot of what we were talking about is this idea of taking fear of taking action. I have a lot of friends in the space, a lot of students that are just afraid, a lot of fear around um, taking action around uh, imposter syndrome and like seriously, like asking for what you're worth, like, right, all these fears that we have as creators, as individual businesses is like the best things in life. And this is like a famous saying, I'm not making this up. This is not for me, but the best things in life happen on the other side of fear. And Mm -hmm. I have seen that happen in my life. I have seen it happen in many other people's lives. So just like get past it, take the leap of faith, create the next video, learn, grow, keep going. I have a shirt that says, make it till you make it. Don't fake it, make it, do it again, do it again, do it again, and keep showing up. And eventually you get so good that people start taking note and recognizing you in public as I am the Juan and only has said. That's (laughs) such such a good name. (laughs) Yeah, I I think about that stuff so much because I, you know, that's the biggest thing for most of my people is that fear, right? And Mm -hmm. my coach said it to me, um, fear, I I call it fear the acronym, uh, false evidence appearing real. Like that's typically what it is, right? Mm -hmm. And I have a sticky note on my computer that says, what could be more advantageous than to create moments in my daily practice that support me? Love it. Like, you know, and, and and we're always putting everything else in front of what we need. And I would say, you know, a lot of what these fears are backed up by is many times, you know, we feel like it's a time management issue. I don't have time for that. A lot of times it's an energy management issue. Like, what are you doing that feeds you and your mm-hmm. soul and like gets you excited so that you want to continue to creating? If yeah. you're showing up from a place of obligation, like obligation is a breeding ground for resentment. And so if you're like feeling obligated to do this, it ain't going to work. Like mm-hmm. you got to come from a place of like true heart. And so reconnect with that if you need to. There ain't no shame in, in that. Amen. I heard something the other day. Someone said, don't let others steal your joy. And I find that I'm trying to lean into that more. Sorry, my camera is trying to focus here. Um don't let others steal your joy. And that always comes from things like, oh, you're a streamer? Well, that's a waste of time. Who watches you? You know, those little snippy comments that people give you to, you know, if you enjoy it, you like it, and you're, you know, and it's bringing you value that you're growing and, and personally love it. No matter what you do, just keep doing it and don't let other people, you know, talk you down from doing it. And be unapologetically you. you know? Yes. That's it. Yes. Love that. Love that. Ash, my friend. I'm just going to be quiet because I'll keep going. And Rob's going to I know. Let's just keep going. <laughs> I, just, I keep hearing it going. I'm like, oh, I'm going to just throw another thing in. So no, <laughs> let you end it, Rob. Same, same. Don't ask any more questions. You don't want to go another hour? Come on, no, Rob. So good. Know, keep on going. It's the end Friday. of the day for me. I, I just need one more cup do. of coffee. Let's do <laughs> round two. <laughs> no, it's great. This is this has been really good. I know we covered a lot of things here. So um, yeah, no, thank you, everyone. I've got I've got to learn honestly the many chat stuff and then just everything that you guys are talking about. So uh, love what you guys are all doing. Thanks for spending time with us this week. And everyone, uh, make sure you follow all these awesome content creators and people here. So uh, until next week, we'll see you all. <laughs>